So Carlos, the end of nine years at Hull FC imminent. How do you feel about that? Um, yeah, mixed emotions to be honest. Um, you know, part of me is uh, you know, really sad to be you know, leaving the club, but you know, I'm, I'm also excited for what comes next. And sometimes in every career, a new challenge is, is good, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I've had a good run here and you know, I've had some amazing times here and you know, I've built relationships that, you know, you know, that will last me forever. So, um, uh, you know, like I said, I'm looking forward to the future and um, you know, I'm excited for what's ahead. Let's look back, though. You've had plenty of big games, highlights in the nine years you've been here. Yeah. Just pick out some of them for us. Uh, obviously, the Challenge Cups probably stand out. Um, um, definitely those two moments, but you know, besides that, you know, probably the semi-final in two thousand seventeen against Leeds. Um, you know, I thought I had a pretty good game then, and I think we played Cass in the Challenge Cup um, during lockdown over at St Helens, and um, I think I got man of the match that that game. Um, so that probably stands out as well. But yeah, there's so many. Um, moments and um, occasions that you know I could probably tell you but yeah but probably those two stick out at the moment. With those Challenge Cup final wins I, I, I guess obviously I wouldn't know that the games go by in a blur to some degree so what can you remember of those? Yeah um, obviously I can't remember every game but um, you know, there's definitely moments that stick out um, you know being somewhere for nine years you're probably not going to remember everything but um, I can definitely remember all the good moments. Um, don't get me wrong, we've been through some tough times, but you know, I'm not going to let that overshadow all the good moments I've had here. Um, you know, I've met some lovely people, and um, you know, not not even the people just within the club, people in the community. Um, you know how they've you know taken my family on and um, helped us out. You know, off the field, um, even just stuff like that. You know, I appreciate so much, and um, you know, it's stuff I'll never forget. I was going to mention about the fact that when you move overseas to play, it's about more than just you, it is your family as well, isn't it? Oh, most definitely. Um, I think they make the biggest sacrifice. Um, you know, they've missed out on birthdays, weddings, you know, Christmas. So, um, yeah, credit goes to my family. Um, you know, they sacrificed so much for me to be here. And, um, you know, the people of Hull to get to see me play. Um, without them, none of this would have been possible. So um, credit to my family. How do you feel you've developed as a player in your time here? Ah, massively, yeah. I think originally I came over, you know, quite a young young man. Um, you know, I've never been the loudest kid. Um, and I'll be honest, I probably did lack confidence when I probably first moved over. Uh, but in saying that, you know, people like Lee Radford, Motu Tony, um, you know, they helped me out so much when I first moved there, and especially Lee Radford, um, he gave me so much confidence. And I say it to this day, he's the best coach I've had throughout my career. And I owe him so much because he did so much for me, not only on the pitch, but off it as well. And um, like I say, credit to, you know, um, Lee Radford, Motu Tony and Adam Pearson. You know, because without what they did for me in that first initial three years I was here, I probably wouldn't have stayed for this long. So thank you to those three men. Initially three years and initially I think you came as a halfback as well, didn't you? Yeah, well, I signed to play centre um, and I think Leon Price must have got injured and then I got chucked in the halves. Um, but now it was great experiences. Um, like I said, I've got no regrets whatsoever and you know everything happens for a reason and um, you know without all those experiences and situations, you know, I wouldn't be the man I am today. How big an honour was it to be recently named club captain in the last few years? Yeah, that was a big honour for myself. Not not just for me, not just for me, but for my family as well. And you know, I said it uh, earlier in the week. Um, you know, to get to walk out with my family, um, you know, as whole captain, you know, that's something I remember for the rest of my life. And um, you know, looking at the history of captains and players that have played for this club, you know, for my name to be amongst those players is um, you know is truly humbling and um, very special for myself. You've picked out some names that have had an influence, obviously Lee Radford, as you've said. But as far as players go, who have been sort of the highlights that you've played with? Um, oh, there's so many. Um, you know, I've seen so many players come and go over the years. Um, probably players that stick out would probably, you know, Gaz Ellis. Um, he didn't say much, but you know, the way he led with his actions and um, you know, he got everybody to follow him, that was you know, very special to be a part of. And, Share the field with him. Um, my friend Danny Houghton, 
um, uh, probably one of the toughest blokes I know, and similar to Gaz, um, probably didn't say too much, but you know, always led with his actions, and um, you know, I got so much respect for those two blokes. Um, also like to you know, give a mention to Mark Minicello, um, you know, just the way he conducted himself in regards to how he looked after his body and uh, with his recovery, nutrition, you know, I learned so much of him. Um, like I said, I could keep going, um, but probably those three blokes probably stand out for me and, you know, had such a huge, huge impact on me uh, being here. Um, then one other, one other bloke would be Feka Palacina. Um, I didn't get to play over much, but what he did for me and my family off the field, uh, yeah, I'll probably never be able to pay him back for what he did for me and my family. But, you know, I have so much respect for him and uh, special mention to Feka Palacina as well. Now it's been a tough year on the field. Two games for you still to go. What do you hope to get out of those final two matches? Uh, it's definitely been a tough year. Um, but for these last two matches, you know, just getting the chance to run out in front of our home fans again you know, for these next two weeks, um, you know, I'm going to soak up every, every bit of it and uh, enjoy it along with my family as well. And I, Again, I said this earlier in the week, I think that's probably the biggest thing I'm going to miss. It's running out at home, in front of our fans. Uh, it's the best feeling in the world. So um, that's definitely what I'll probably try and soak up as much as I can these next two weeks. Obviously, you're not retiring. Well, I say obviously, you're not retiring. I guess you're not retiring. So where do you see your career going next? Have you got things in the pipeline? Yeah, there's stuff. I've had conversations with people. Um, obviously, I've signed with a new agent in Craig Harrison. Um, and he's been out there speaking to clubs. Um, like I said, you know, there's been a few conversations with people. Um, officially, I haven't signed anything yet, but you know, hopefully within the next you know, one or two weeks, hopefully me and Craig can sit down and um, you know, assess our options and have something sorted. So um, you know, I definitely want to keep playing next year. You know, I've still got that fire in my belly and you know, I still think I can compete with the top centres in the competition. So yeah, excited for what's going to come next. So looking to stay in this country, at least for the time being, then? Oh, most definitely, yeah. Like I said, the, you know, the fire's still burning there, and um, I still feel like I have a lot to offer in terms of my experience you know, and my ability as well. So um, we'll see what comes next. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, don't know. Yeah, right? Good, thanks. Yeah. Oh, um, bit of a cliche question, but obviously you've been in nine years now, and obviously this club means a lot to you. I mean, how, how can you sort it all up, like your emotions and, and what you've achieved, obviously, throughout the throughout time? Yeah, it's been a roller coaster, mate. That's probably how I could explain it. Um, uh, when I first come over, I had a pretty good start to my career here and with winning the Challenge Cups. Um, but then, yeah, after that, we've probably had a slow decline uh, within terms of the club. But I'd like to think that you know my performances, especially after seventeen, for that six year period, I always. Had a pretty good standard of performance. Um, uh, you know, I'd like to think that you know the fans saw that, and I'm sure the coaching staff saw that as well. Um, but um, yeah, it's obviously tough seeing where the club is now. Um, but, you know, the future's so bright, man. Um, you look at these young kids coming through, and you know, if the club can build around those young kids and you know bring in some you know, players, um, you know, not for a long term but short term to help those younger players progress, I think that will go a long way in helping this club get back to where it's supposed to be. Adam described uh, it a little bit like a passing the torch moment, obviously you've lost with the cup winning team and yourself yeah. and Danny moving on, there's also a young plethora of young people coming through now, I mean, how, how confident are you that like, they can do that and link the club into the future? Oh, most definitely. Um, in terms of passing the torch on, you look at kids like Davy Litton, you know, I see him as an England international within years to come and you know, if he's a starting centre next year, oh my God, you know, the club should be excited about that and um, you know, he's got a bright future and um, you know, hopefully, you know, I can pass the torch on to him and hopefully everything that, you know, I've kind of shared my experience with Davey in the last couple of years and hopefully that can take him to the next level as well. Obviously, you spoke about your performance, obviously there's been some tough moments, aren't there? Obviously, your Achilles was probably the toughest away at Catalans a couple of years ago. I mean, how, how much... Like toughness and resilience do you need to actually get through that and get back playing to the level that you want to play at? 
Oh, yeah, it's massive, mate. Um, I think for everybody else, they don't see what goes on behind the scenes or you know, they don't know what players are dealing with you know, after games or before games. All they see is what we do on the pitch. So, um, mate, I tell you right now, it's a tough job, uh, especially with outside noises, um, dealing with the pressure, um, especially living in Hull as well. Uh, with two rugby teams here and you know, it can be a bit of a fishbowl at moments but in saying that it's a tough job but you know very grateful to do what we do um, you know, to live out your childhood dream and you know go to work and do something you love every day uh, is very fortunate so um, that, that's something I try and tell these younger boys as well to to enjoy it because looking back you know it's just it's kind of gone just like that so um, yeah <laughs> Did it surprise you just how passionate Hull fans could be in this city? You know, obviously coming as a young 23-year-old when you arrived here from New Zealand, did it, did it surprise you at all? Yeah, definitely, mate. I, I didn't realise how big a following the club had. Um, and obviously, coming here as a young a young man, I didn't really know the history of the club as well. And um, you know, the history is massive in this club. And, you know, the fans are really loyal and, you know, they get behind the team and, yeah, they let you know when you're doing well and when you're not doing well, but yeah, that's sport, isn't it? But, um, you know, their fans are very passionate here and you can tell they love this club and it means a lot to them. So, um, yeah, respect to the fans and um, yeah, thanks to them for supporting me throughout these years. I mean, some of those fans have described you and put you on, you know, levels like James Lowe, like, you know, putting you on that sort of store saying you've been one of the best overseas signs of clubs I've set in the modern era. So, you know, it's, it's, it shows the appreciation that they've had for your career here. Yeah, that's very humbling to hear, mate. Um, yeah, I'm not the biggest on social media, so I try not to read too much. But um, it's nice to hear that, mate. Um, you know, to be in the same sentence as James Luluai is, uh, like I said, it's humbling for me. You know, a young kid coming from New Zealand, you know, James Lulu, James Luluai was someone I probably idol idolized growing up. So um, yeah, just to be in the same sentence as him, mate, you know, that's special and, like I said, very humbling for myself. Was there any point this year where the future was looking like you would have kept on at Hull FC or has it always been a goal of yours to maybe try a different challenge? Or? Yeah, there were obviously conversations throughout the year. Um, you know, I don't want to dive too, too deep into them, but obviously with you know Tony being the coach at the start of the year and then him going, um, then Richie coming in, um, yeah, there was always conversations going on. But for me personally, and with speaking to the club, we just thought it was the right time to move on uh, you know, for myself and the club um, you know like you know, all good things must come to an end and like I said I've got no regrets and I've got no you know, ill feelings or bad feelings to anyone now that I'm leaving um, and I feel like I'm leaving on good terms and you know, that's how I want it to be. Obviously a lot of pride then looking back at your career obviously 180 odd games two cup wins no medals so uh, lots to be proud about. Oh most definitely mate like I said, I've got no regrets and you know, the memories I've I've made over these years and the bonds I've created with you know, certain people was is priceless, mate. And um, you know, for my family to see me play at Wembley as well, um, you know, that's something that I remember for forever and hopefully oh, it will, you know, will be marked down in history and you know, we'll, all those players that played in those seasons will you know, will be remembered for you know, forever. So, um, you know, very... Very honoured and grateful to be a part of it. Cheers, Carlos. Cheers, mate. Cheers, brother. Hey, Carlos. Um, you joined the club in its sort of ascendancy, uh, culminating in the, the two Challenge Cup wins, uh, which was exciting times for us. Yeah. Um, and we've been on this little bit of a decline last couple of seasons to where we are now. If there was a little piece of magic you could take away from that era, you know, you know, eight, seven or eight years ago, what would you do? What would you bring from there to what you could put into place now? Um. I think if you look at our squad in 16 and 17 and the calibre of players we had then, um, I didn't realise it at the time, but the players we had on that team in terms of leaders, um, that's probably something we're missing at the moment. And it wasn't just one or two leaders. We had the likes of Mark Minicello, uh, Frank Pritchard, Sikamanu. Um, you know, those two were both captain of their countries at the moment, as, as well as many for Italy as well. And then we had Danny Houghton, Gaz Ellis, Kirk Yeeman, uh, Leon Price. Um, there's, there's probably a few I'm missing still, but that amount of leaders we had in that team, it just made everybody else's job so easy. And like I said, I didn't realise it at the time, but 
and how fortunate I was to play with all those players. Like I said, it made my job so easy and I'm sure it made everybody else's job easy as well. So I think if I could bring anything from that time to where we are now, I think that would help massively to where this club could go further. Uh, so do you see that the sign is all made for next year, um, coming along and bringing that experience uh, again, leading to some exciting times? Yeah, I don't, I don't know any of them personally, um, but I hope so, mate. You know, for the sake of this club, I hope those players can come in and give these young kids what they need in terms of leadership um, and setting good standards. You know, I hope those players can come in and, like I said, you know, this club deserves to be in the top four every year and hopefully those players can come in along with Richie, um, John Cartwright and take this club where it's supposed to be. Uh, and yourself uh, and Danny, uh, I suppose you're the, the last of the class of 16, 17, um, leaving at the end of the year. I spoke to Danny last night uh, and it was very complimentary about yourself um, and the things you've done. What sort of things can you say about Danny in terms of what he's done? You've already mentioned that he's yeah. a, been a big part of your success at the club. Yeah, he's a character, is Danny. Um, what you see, what you see of Danny on the pitch is the total opposite of what you get off the pitch. Um, but now, Danny is a great man. Um, like you said, he's been a great servant to this club and you know, probably the greatest greatest servant to this club ever. So um, now he deserves the respect he gets, and um, you know what he's done for this club over the years is is priceless. And um, you, know, you know, he's just such a good bloke. Um, like I said, he's a family man. But he knows how to get along with the boys as well. Um, he's probably the only player who I can see who can flick the switch and just get on with a game. You know, not be too serious before the game, but once he crosses that white line, you know, you you know what you're going to get from Danny. So, uh, you know, like I said, he's a great bloke, uh, great player. So uh, you know, he's definitely going to be missed, and uh, I'm going to be I'm going to miss playing with him as well. And, and just to reiterate, it was very complimentary about yourself as well. Oh, I appreciate great to hear. Yeah. Um, just finally from me, um, a message to the fans. Um, yeah, just thank you for welcoming me and my family. Uh, you know, when we first moved over, um, you know, it wasn't easy at the time, but you know, the support uh, that they gave me and my family at that time was um, very important. And obviously, just the support over the years. Um, you know, I'll, you know, mostly had positive stuff from all the fans and, um, you know, I'm definitely going to miss them and, um, you know, hopefully they get some success soon. Thanks, Carlos, and all the best for the future. Cheers, brother. Carlos, obviously you came here as a young lad. What was your mindset when you came here? Was it bouncing back to the NRL after a couple of years or was it just a bit of an open mind situation? Yeah, so originally I signed a three-year contract. I think I was about 23 at the time and um, yeah, the plan was to go back to the NRL after that. But like I said earlier, um, you know, the impact Lee Radford, Motu Tony had on me in that initial period, I think that's the reason why I stayed so long. So um, you know, definitely the plan was to go back and I always had aspirations to play NRL again, but you know, things work out differently, don't they? And um, Exactly, mate. Life does get in the way and um, you know, I was enjoying that much here in Arwen and my family was quite settled and they were happy here as well. So. Um, yeah, we just thought there was no no reason to move back, and um, you know, I was enjoying my footy. I thought I was playing well enough, so um, we just thought we might as well just keep the ball rolling. So, um, like I said, man, I got no regrets, and you know, things happen for a reason. And um, yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with everything. You spoke about on field memories. Is anything off the field come to mind when you think about great times you had here? Yeah, there's been a lot of good memories off the pitch as well. Um, I probably can't dive too deep into that, but um, like I said, I've made so many great friends, not just from Hull FC, but off the pitch as well, that my family have come close to. And you know, the relationships I've built with people away from rugby as well has been, been enormous for myself. Um, it's really given me that balance between rugby and my personal life. Um, so yeah, definitely, mate, building those relationships off the pitch uh, it's just as special as burning them on it as well. Yeah, you settled in Hull. Obviously, you've laid roots here. Your kids have grown up here. Got school here. Is there is a long term plan to stay here, or can you see yourself moving back home in the future? Um, I think eventually we would like to move back uh, to that side of the world. Um, but if you look when I first come over, 
I literally come for three years and nine years later I'm still here. So um, I just think a plan, you know, it never goes to plan, does it, when you make a plan? So um, I'm never going to say never. Um, if I'm still here in nine years' time again, uh, so be it. But if I do move back home, you know, it might be soon. But yeah, at the moment, I'm not sure. Have you thought about life in terms of a career after the game? Yeah, definitely. I'm putting things in place. Well, I have been putting things in place over the last couple of years in regards to life after rugby. Um, hopefully that will make my transition away from the game a lot easier. And who knows, one day I might be back involved with the, with the club in some capacity. I'm not sure what the future holds, but uh, yeah, I'll never say never. You, meant, you spoke about the new signings earlier, but Jordan Rapper has been announced tonight, or this afternoon rather. Have you come across him before? What do you think he can bring? Um, I haven't come across him personally, but I have played against him. Um, from watching him play in the NRL, he is, he's the ultimate competitor, isn't he? Um, it's, uh, you know, for him to still doing what he's doing now at his age is, you know, it's enormous, man. Not many people can do that at that age. And, um, you know, for him to come over here and bring his experiences and share them with the younger lads, like I mentioned, um, and bring that competitive competitiveness is is huge and I think that's probably one of the key areas we're probably missing so um, uh, he'll be huge for these kids and um, the experiences he, he can pass on to them throughout his career will be priceless. Can you see progress being made next season obviously with Cartwright coming over and wrapping her and a few of us can you see can you see strides forward being made? Oh most definitely mate um, you look at the disruption we've had this year I, th I don't think it's ever happened at any club so um you know, there's only one way up for this club and like you said with guys like John Asiata, uh, Jordan Rapana coming in, mate, those are two very good players and two very good leaders. Like I mentioned that the club are missing at the moment so hopefully they can come in and you know, definitely help these young kids and bring some success to this club like it deserves. Cheers mate, thank you very much. Cheers mate. You said about being a young man when you came over here, um, the, the one game that Everybody talks about for any new player coming over here is of course the whole derby and your, your first derby experience was quite an iconic one on Good Friday in 2016 at Croton Park wasn't it? I know you went off injured that day but how, how much did that surprise you to see you know, th that, that atmosphere and to, how, how much of that would you take away with you? Yeah the whole derby man. Oh. There's probably nothing else like it, is there? But um, in terms of playing in a derby, it come quite early for me because that was our first pre-season match when I come over here. So that was the first match I played in was a whole derby. And it was only a pre-season game, but you know, the amount of fans that turned up that day and the chants and the singing, I'd never experienced anything like that. So um, to experience that in that pre-season game was, I even got chills just playing in that game. So if you can compare it to what it was like in a Good Friday game, it was even bigger, wasn't it? Um, but man, I've, I've enjoyed the whole derby throughout the years. Um, at the start, we've had some pretty good memories and had some good results. Um, unfortunately, it hasn't happened the last couple of years, but yeah, man, it's been a great experience and it's been good to be a part of. Um, obviously, you, you've talked about great players that you've played alongside while you've been here. The one player I wanted to have back to for you um, that you played with before you came here and he retired the other week from the NRO, a certain Mr Sean Johnson. You obviously, you partnered him in the halves for the Junior Kiwis, didn't you? When, how much do you remember of him, you know, what it was like to play alongside him and how difficult was it for you then, having played halves, to come over and start, start learning your trade as a centre before then being chucked into the halves again? Yeah, Sean, obviously, what a great career he's had. Um, obviously, he's announced his retirement, so I wish him all the best and you know, what's to come next for him. But um, in terms of playing him, yeah, he was just he was just a freak, wasn't he? Um, <laughs> That's one way he's always it, kind of had that superstar status growing up and obviously coming into the grades with him at, at the Warriors and then eventually playing in a row with him. Um, you could just see what he was going on to do and um, just his ability and his talent. Um, you knew he was some, something special and um, you know, it's good to see the career he had and um, you know, I'm very fortunate and privileged to say I got to play alongside him uh, but in terms of coming over here and playing centre um, coming through the younger grades before the Warriors 
I'd always kind of played centre as well. So um, you know, coming over and playing centre was no real shock or surprise to me. Um, I think naturally I've always been a centre, um, but also could do a job at half. But um, like I said, you know, it wasn't a big shock. And um, you know, those conversations that I had with Lee Radford, Lee Radford before I moved over was that I was always, I was always going to play centre anyways. Um, so it wasn't a massive shock. Right. Um, one last question. Obviously, two Challenge Cup finals. What do you remember of those two particular days? And, you know, obviously setting off with the fans seeing you off to go off to Wembley both times. What, what do you remember of those times and those particular yeah. days at Wembley? It's funny. I can't remember much of the games, but I can remember getting the bus down there and then obviously celebrating on the way back and then obviously going to town hall and standing on the uh, terrace there i can remember that clearly so um yeah, like i said man, those are some great memories and um i'm happy to be a part of those teams and um yeah those memories will last me a lifetime and um you know hopefully i'll be friends with all those folks for the rest of my life and um, finally two games left for you Apparently, Danny Houghton will do his best to be available for the last game. What What do you want to see from those last two games? From you know, from the young lads that are surrounding you, and you know, and from the supporters. What What would be the ultimate for you for these last two games? Um, obviously, the situation we're in is quite tough, and um, you look at our team. You know, there's blokes playing out of position, and uh, you know, we haven't got the best lineup, have we? But um, all I can ask for is that everybody just has a dig and everybody competes. Um, you know, talent-wise, we're probably not the best, but what we can control is you know competing, uh, not giving up. So um, that's what I'd like to get out of these next few games. And on a personal level, just you know, getting to run out in front of our home crowd again at our home stadium. And I'm going to try, like I said earlier, try and soak it up as much as I can and um, you know, get as much out of out of that experience as possible before I. Do eventually leave.